Hello and welcome back again. I'm going to walk you through how to make a green screen background that will work in TEPSEX and I'm using Photoshop. And if you don't have Photoshop, uh, I'm not really certain how to do it in Elements, but I'm sure you can do it in Elements and probably other uh, graphic programs too. But uh, being that Photoshop is the industrial standard graphics program, that's what we use. And you see on the screen here, I've got a uh, green screen background that I designed for a customer. And this is just uh, a sample that I would send a client to kind of give them a preview of what the background would look like. Uh, I've got the two pirates in the background. And of course, those won't be in the uh, final image output because that's where your subjects will be that you'll be taking pictures of. But this just kind of gives you an idea of the layout. Uh, there's other elements that I've got on, on here that aren't showing up right now, but I'm just going to try to keep this real simple. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the pirates off because we don't need those for our green screen background. I mentioned earlier I was just taught this way, and this is just how I've, I've just continued to do it since I've been taught. Uh, I'll take the final background and when I save it I also save the border that would be the front of the picture that would be the logo uh, the frame that's around the picture and the little medallion with the skull and the two swords going through it that's really the front of the picture but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and I'm going to go up to layer and I'm gonna say flatten image and it's going to ask me, do I discard my, my hidden layers? Yeah, I don't really care about the hidden ones. And now my layer is flattened. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to say save as. And I'm going to save it as a JPEG. And I'm going to put it on my desktop. And I'm going to save it as pirate back. I already had that typed in. But you can name it anything you want to. But uh, I mentioned earlier that I always name my background image back so that I don't get confused. And it's just a good way of knowing what that image is. So I'm saving on my desktop. I'm gonna say save. And now I've saved that image to my background, to my, to my desktop. And I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna undo me flattening those layers. And now if you look over here, you notice all my layers are back up and I don't need these background. I don't need the ship. I don't need the rocks I created, the sky. All these are different elements. If you look, I can turn individual ones on and off, how I created this. I put fog over that, that ship, so it kind of looks like it's in the fog. Um, you know, different sky. I can put a different ship up there. Uh, different things that you turn on and off. I don't need any of these, so I've just got them all. I, I put all my layers in, in groups so that I can easily keep up with what I have because some of my backgrounds get pretty complicated. I'm just going to turn all that off. And now that all that's left that's turned on is this border. And it's actually two of them. And this logo. And the only other thing that should be visible are the skulls over here. So I can pick on any layer that's visible. I'm going to just go down here, pick this one that's the, the border. And this is where, this is how you make uh, this work in TEPS X. The first thing you want to do is you want to go up to layer and you want to say merge visible. The second thing you do, then you go to select and you go down here to load selection. And then over here, it gives you an opportunity to invert the image, which, which you really would have to do. Sometimes you'll get to this step and you'll forget to check this, I do, and it won't work, the template won't work. So if you check invert and hit okay, now you'll notice, notice all the marching ants around the border. So anything that's inside of those marching ants is going to be showing up. 
anything outside of it, Photoshop's going to ignore when it prints. I'll give you an example of that in a minute. Then the next step you want to do is over here, if you've never used channels before, over here where your layer layers are, you'll have a button called channels. If it's not there, you can go under window and turn channels on and off. But mine's there by default. I'll go to channels and you'll notice all your different channels there, red, green, and blue, and the RGB. All you're going to do is go right down here to the little gray folder with the white circle in it and click that you want to add a new channel. And now you notice right here you have an alpha channel. That's all you have to do. The next step is go back up here to layer. And this is another one of those steps that TEPSEX taught me how to do. But I'm not really sure why I do it this way, but I do. Uh, I make sure first that my colors down here, uh, by default in Photoshop, your colors are going to be uh, black text over a white background. Just invert that where the black is the background layer. And then you go to layers, go to new, and then go background from layer. And that's going to put a black background back there. And now all I need to do is I need to save this file somewhere where I can find it. I'm going to put it back on the desktop again. I'm going to say save as, and I'm going to save it as a Photoshop uh, file. And this is really, really important. And if I was to save this right now, this wouldn't work. But I've done this enough times to know that this is not going to work unless I click this little box that says alpha channels. Because you want to save that alpha channel with this folder, with this file. So if that's not checked and you get that little triangle with the explanation mark in it, it's not going to work. You got to make sure you check this alpha channel. So you want to save that alpha channel with this file. And I'm going to say, I'm just going to call it Pirate Front. And I'm going to save it right in my, on my desktop like I did the other one. All right, we're almost there. That's all you have to do to create a background that will work with TEPSEX. Now, I'm going to go through this really quick because this is what we did in the last video. And I'm trying to keep these videos short. Uh, I'm going to quit TEPSEX because I'm in the, the main capture screen. I'm going to go back to the main menu again. I'm going to go to set up utilities. I'm going to go to set up a chroma key template and a new template. And I'm going to make this one again six by four. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to drag my background layer down and it's on my desktop. And it's called Pirate Back. Got that. Click it. And it's telling me I need to have that in the graphics folder, which I completely forgot about that. Should have saved that there to start with. Um, so it's not going to let me do it. Um, and I'm about to run out of time on this video. So I'm going to come back and we'll, we'll start this process all over again, uh, showing you how this background would work uh, really quick in TEPSEX. I'll get those, those folders set up in the correct position and I'll show you how to do that.